when projects get complicated, you end up with lots of layers and so far everything we've done has been designed to start animating on frame one and end animating at some point down the timeline. But there's going to come a time when you want to have animation starting much later. So how do you get things to move down the timeline or start things you know, as you go along? Well, a couple of tips for you to get that uh, underway before we actually show you how to do that. Number one is, like in this example, I've got a bunch of layers here, and I know I'm not going to mess with these anymore. A great thing to do when you've got this sort of situation, a finished product that is, uh, you don't want to do any more work to it, is to put all of these away in a folder. And this button down here is the new folder button. And you can double click a folder and name it. I'll call this one background. And I can select layers and uh, just drop them inside there and now they're in the folder and that just lets me turn the arrow and keep them out of the way so it looks like one layer. I can also lock the folder and that locks all of the layers and that's good because then I won't, if, even if I click on them, it won't let me change them or modify them. Sometimes if they're not that way, especially, <clears throat> especially with shapes, you can accidentally click and move it away and then it, uh, it messes up your stuff. So lock the layers when you're done with them and they won't be broken. Now this background is meant to come on and stay there for a long time. How do I get it to uh, to last that long? Well, what I'll need to do is <clears throat> jump way down here to however long I need it to stay, let's say frame 160 for example, and hit F5. And what that will do is insert frames for all those layers all the way down here. You can do that for any individual layer as well. The animation ended here and I inserted regular frames all the way out to 160. They're not keyframes, there's no new information, they're just regular frames so that the animation or the, the finished animation stays put. Now what if I want uh, some new animations to show up somewhere after this finishes? This finishes on frame 48, let's say on frame 60 I want to have some new stuff happen. Well, I can create a new layer and uh, this layer automatically has some empty frames all the way out to the length of the project. Right here on frame 60, I'm going to insert a keyframe with F6. And uh, let's say on this keyframe, I'm going to draw a shape. I'll use the paintbrush tool. And I'm going to draw a, um, a white. My alpha was still at zero. I need to change that back to 100%. Uh, a white um, candy cane. Uh, I'm going to change the paintbrush options, and to do that, I have to. It's, it's kind of running off the area that I'm recording here. It's too far down for you to see it. But uh, down here at the bottom of the timeline, I've got two buttons. One is um, brush size, and the other one is brush shape. So brush size will was what you'd use to make it a bigger circle. And so I'm going to paint a candy cane right here. Sort of. Okay, and then uh, I'll pick a red color and make some stripes. Also for this, another tip, uh, right here in the corner, right above the brush size, there's an option for changing the paint mode, the brush mode, and at the bottom of this pop-out menu that you can't see, is um, paint inside and if you choose that option and then you come over here and if I paint, let me zoom in so you can see this better if I paint inside the white and then I start painting my red stripe I can actually go outside the lines and when I let go it's only going to paint inside so that's a handy tool for making stuff go right to the edge like that Helps speed it up when you're trying to be uh, not too careful. Okay, so there's a candy cane, sort of, and I'll zoom back out. Okay, that's my candy cane. It's on this keyframe. I'm going to go a little bit farther down to frame 90 and insert another keyframe. And now we're just animating like we've been doing. So I can uh, take this keyframe, I can delete the candy cane, and I can replace it with a, an oval. We'll make it white. 
and uh, use the paintbrush again to um, paint some red stripes on it. Oh, I need to change the color. Okay, so that kind of looks like one of those candies, but not really because I'm not a good artist. So that's good. Uh, now I can tween between these two because they're both shapes. So right click or control click here, create shape tween. And there's a really strange looking shape tween. Okay. okay, so the background comes on and then this candy cane turns into a little candy. But uh, what if I want this candy cane to stay put for a while? Right now it just changes right away and you hardly get to see that it's a candy cane. So here's what you would do. This is the keyframe with the candy cane on it and we want to copy that keyframe. So edit uh, timeline, copy frames and then I'll go to one frame before that and I'll choose edit timeline paste frames. And now I've got two keyframes you can see here and here and I'll just take this uh, first uh, animated keyframe, the second one in this sequence, grab the last keyframe sorry, click here, hold down shift, grab the last one to select that whole tween there, and then I'll just take that start of it and just drag it down. So I'm dragging the whole thing down to frame like 80 or so. And now it's kind of strange, but it looks like there's two tweens here. The only problem is this one and this one are exactly the same frame, so there's no animating happening between here and here, even though there's a tween. So it's tweening to nothing, which means we can just remove this tween. Control click and choose remove tween. And now you've got the candy cane holding still and then starting to change. There's three keyframes involved, one to make it appear, one to start the tween, and then the ending result. Uh, now I did that sort of backwards. I did the tween first and then I added this other keyframe in front. There's another way to do that. Let's try a new layer here. Um, let me put my back up there okay let's go uh, new layer and I'll just pick where I want this one to start I want this one to start on frame 70 so I'll insert a keyframe here F6 and on this keyframe I'll draw a uh, with the paintbrush tool I'll draw a Christmas tree like so Again, not really an artist so much. I could probably have my three-year-old draw right next to me and you wouldn't be sure who was drawn what. But So there's a tree. Obviously that's a tree. And uh, I want it to last, you know, out to frame 80 right there. So I'll just insert another keyframe. Okay. And then down here, I want it to tween just like the candy cane does into something else. So I'll insert another keyframe. So I've got my three keyframes. It's just that this one appears second. So I want to do my tween from here to here. And so on the last frame here, I'll delete the tree. Thank goodness. And we'll draw a, uh, I don't know, a uh, square. We'll pretend that's a present. I can draw squares really well. And uh, that's a shape, and this is a shape, so I can just control click here, create shape tween, and there you go. So, if we watch this from the start, the background comes in, candy cane appears, tree appears, then they both tween into other shapes. If I need to move things around, I can extend these or move them farther down the timeline simply by adding frames. If I click here, and I hit F5, I'm inserting frames and it's just moving this down. Same thing here.
Or if I want the animation to take longer, I can insert frames in the middle of a tween. And all that's doing is just making that uh, a longer transition from this shape into that shape. And again, removing frames is easy. Um, select what you want to remove. Hold down Shift to select more than one. And then Shift F5 will remove the frames. And that's how it's done.